So we're getting pretty close to the point where we might try to test a build and run of the game. But when you're in a full screen build of the game, you would have no easy way to exit the game properly. So let's set up the game so that we can press the escape button at any time so that we can exit the game even if we're in a full screen view. So kind of similar to how we have the player input component on our player, let's add a component where we can take these same actions, but the UI side of it rather than the player input side of things, and then use the UI mapping in order to respond to the escape button being pressed and use that to exit the game. So to keep things with how we have it right now, I'll add a player input component to the UI manager. So with this, we'll take the player input actions, the same one that we are using on the player itself. Let's click here and add this to the prefab as well. And let's actually add it on the prefab for the UI manager. This time, though, we're going to take the default map and change this to UI. We'll change the behavior to invoke Unity events. And now let's double click on the actions, the player input actions, and look at the UI action maps. So I'll add a new action to the UI actions. Let's hit escape. And I suppose I'll just call this escape. So the path here is going to be keyboard. And then let's do location of key and look for the escape key. And we would want to use this with at least the keyboard and mouse control scheme. So let's take the player input, save access, hit the X. OK, so now we want to expand events and we'll look for UI. And then we're going to need to create a new function to call when the escape action is pressed. So let's do that in our UI manager. I'm going to edit the script and then let's go down here to the bottom and I'll create a new function. So this will be public void on exit. And we're going to take a import action callback context context. And we want to check if context dot started. So when the context is started, we want to exit the game. So I'll actually call it on exit game. I think that's more appropriate. So this next bit, I'm going to copy paste and then we can talk about it a little bit. So the first thing you probably notice is that we have these hashtag if and hashtag end if statements. So this if hashtag means that the code in between the if and the end if will only run if we're in the context specified here. So you can see that we have different contexts. Unity editor, which would mean that we are running the game inside of the Unity editor, or if we have a development build of the game, which when you build your game, you, you can do a check mark for development build, which means that you can have all sorts of debugs, which means that you can have all sorts of debug messages print to the combo while you're testing the build of the game. And then when you're in the official build of the game, it just wouldn't apply if you specify with a hashtag if like this. So inside of here, we have debug log. So we're saying the name of the object, the type of the object, which I think would come out to UI manager, the class. And then after that, we're saying which function that we're running, which in this case is on exit game. So it'll say something like UI manager of type UI manager is running the method on exit game. So we get the method name with system reflection method base get current method dot name. And this will only run if we're in the editor or the development build. So it's a good way to check that this on exit function was at least trying to run. So then we have some more if logic down here. So if we're in the Unity editor, the way you get the game to stop is you tell the editor application is playing and you set that to false. Now that's different than other builds of the game. So if you have a standard fully built Unity game, Unity standalone, so that would be if you're playing the game on Windows, on the desktop, or Linux, or Mac, or whatever. And then I have a third one down here, Unity WebGL. So you can use Unity WebGL if you wanted to be able to play your game inside of the web browser. Now, getting the game to exit from the web browser is a little bit screwy. Application.quit might get the game to technically stop, but it doesn't make the screen go black or anything. So my way around that to stop the music and everything else is to change to a different scene. So in that scene, there's just nothing but black space, no music or anything. So if you want this load scene to work, then let's go to scenes, create a new scene. I'll call it quit scene. So make sure the string name is the same. Double click into the scene. I'll take the main camera and let's change the background type to solid color, the color to black. And we need to add this scene to the build of our game. So file. Uh, let's see, build settings, add open scenes. So this is really important. We have the scenes for our game. If a scene isn't in the build of the game, then it can't be opened. So any levels you want to be able to actually be playable, 
make sure those are in the list here. So to add it, you just open the scene in your inspector, come in here to file build settings and add the open scenes. Make sure it's in the list somewhere. You may also notice that for the scenes in your build, they do give an integer value. So you could reference the scene by its integer value. Generally, I prefer to use the string name for it, though. And then down here, you can see the different platforms you can build for Windows, Mac, Linux, the default easy option, and then WebGL here as well. So if you see an option that's grayed out, then you might need to run the Unity installer again and make sure that you add the different uh, build targets to your installation of Unity. So if you want to build for Android and you're installing Unity, you need to make sure you check the little box for Android build settings or build package and same for iOS and everything else. OK, let's go back to our gameplay scene and I'm going to grab the UI manager. So we have the events created. Let's go to UI. I'm going to go down to escape, add the new function to call here. UI manager, drag and drop that, then click on the drop down UI manager on exit game. Now we can see that I'm editing this in the gameplay scenes. So I need to apply this to the prefab. So go up to the top for player import. Click on the three dots, modified component, apply to prefab manager. OK, just to make sure that anytime you use the prefab manager, this is already set up. So now let's hit play and then I'm going to hit the exit key and it's going to exit the game. We can also see in the console that we had the UI manager being called here for exit the game. So we know that the exit function was working. Let's actually do a quick build of the game and make sure that it's working there as well. So I'll do file build settings. Let's make sure we're in Windows, Mac, Linux. If you want, you can check development build so that you can still access the console debug messages and that kind of stuff. Use this for testing, not when you actually distribute your games. Uh, so let's do a build and run. I'll create a new folder inside of the project here. Let's see, new folder, I'll call it build. Now notice this is outside of the assets folder. Definitely don't build your project in the assets. That would be bad. <laughs> so any folder outside of that is probably OK. So let's go out to build select folder. We don't need it to be accessing Unity services for right now, so we can just hit yes to continue and just let the game build and then run. OK, so here we have the build for our game in full screen. We can see development build in the bottom right, so we can test everything. Note that the font size doesn't exactly scale up, but it's OK for right now. And everything else seems to be working just fine. So let's hit escape and test. OK, so our game exits when we hit escape. That's what we were looking for.